continuing, <clears throat> exciting prime factor trees. All right, prime factorization and prime factor trees. Um, usually you have, oops, usually you've got two numbers. Say we got 24 and 36. And you're asked to do the prime factorization. Again, you hear the word factor, so we're thinking again of the numbers that can be used to multiply and create these numbers. So the prime factorization, though, is going to use only prime numbers to um, multiply to get this number 24 or the number 36. 24, think of two numbers that can be multiplied to get 24. There's a lot to pick from. Um, say we check uh, or we pick uh, 4 and 6. All right, neither of those are prime, so we keep going. For 4, we get 2 and 2. 6, we get 3 and 2. All of these are prime, so we stop. Okay, um, we're done. We have nowhere further to go on that. The prime factorization for 24 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. These prime numbers here, you'll notice 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24. So that's the prime factorization of 24. We can use our knowledge of exponents to shorten this up here, 2 to the third power times 3. The prime factorization of 36, uh, we'll go for 6 and 6. Neither of those are prime, so we keep going. 2 times 3 over here, also 2 times 3. These are prime numbers, so we stop. Prime factorization for this one is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. A quick check, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, times 3 is 36. And again, these can be shortened up to 2 squared times 3 squared. Okay, and that's the prime factorization for these two numbers. Now, what good is this? What can we do with it? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, let me see if I can find the right pen here. It is one of these, uh, highlighter, okay. We can find a few things with prime factor trees. If we look for the numbers that they share in common, um, the numbers that they have in common here, numbers they share in common, uh, we, oh, whoops, okay, is, Lost my pen. Come on, that one. They have a two, and this one has a two. This has a two here, and this has a two there. They share two twos in common. They also share a three. Okay, but not both threes, just one three in common. Nor do they share the extra two that 24 has. These are the only ones that they share in common. And you'll notice that if you take those numbers here. 2 times 2 times 3. Those are the common factors. 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 equals 12. That is the greatest common factor that 24 and 36 share. Some people like that better than um, having to do what uh, some of us have learned to do. We take the number 24 and 36 and we list all their factors. We did this on the prior page here. I don't remember if we use the same numbers. Um, check here. Now we did 36. We saw we had a huge list of them here. Um, let me see if I put 24 down. We can actually write on that here. Let me use this eraser to clear this out here. Make a little way. That way I'll save a little bit of time. Um, 24. All right, so go back here. 24. The factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. And if that causes you some pause and you're wondering if you forgot any, don't feel bad because that's just something. The more you work with the numbers and multiplication tables, the easier listing all the factors comes. Um, but you'll notice that um, as uh, we suspected here, the common, the greatest common factor that they share is uh, 12 right here. There they are. Nothing higher. That's the greatest common factor. Now, um, there it is again. Now, what good is that? The greatest common factor is used to help us um, reduce fractions very quickly. 
So, for instance, if we actually had the fraction um, uh, 2436, oh, right in the highlighter. Um, Oh, that looks special. 24 and 36. Uh, if we use the greatest common factor when we go to reduce, which we know is 12, we get two, um, three, two thirds as our answer. If we didn't do that, then you're going to be, if you don't use the greatest common factor, um, you're going to be somebody probably who then, say, divides by two and you get 12 eighteenths. Oh, well, that can be divided by two. And that's six um, ninths. And then, oh, that can be divided by three. And that finally, we get down to two thirds. So the idea is just that um, the greatest common factor, we practice that. We use prime factorization trees. All of that is done so that you become more skilled at being able to later just simply look at numbers and recall what their greatest common factors are. That's all they're really for is that sort of practice. We don't usually use them in everyday life, but they're simply something that practices skills that we can look at numbers later and manipulate them. In this case, we're able to reduce them very quickly. They have one other use. Um, that is to find the uh, lowest common multiple, which is uh, going to be discussed in the next segment.